Hi, Michael Guest here for the Fishing World website. How are you going? Just want to have a little bit of a chat about hooks. Fishing hooks and catching fish has been around forever. And the evolution of hooks from original hooks that were made out of bone and shell, uh, Polynesian people, people across the world had to catch fish and they, they twisted up line. And it's been a, 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 an evolution that's gone from that primitive stage right up to the point now where we have these state-of-the-art chemically sharpened hooks. And even in the last 10 years, we've seen a big influx of those chemically sharpened hooks. So these days, gone are the days where you had a file and you had to sharpen them. We just have a look at some different types. On the left here, we've got a couple of worm hooks, long chank style worm hooks. Now these are hooks that we use, even smaller versions of that for catching garfish off the wharf or small mullet, little trevally, uh, somewhere where you'd start with the kids. And then we've got these longer worm, worm hooks which we'd use for whiting, where we might use live yabbies, small worms, small presentations, and light hooks. I want to talk about light hooks. It's difficult for you to see, but we'll get a close up there in a second. That's a very, very fine gauge hook. And, and this one, even though it's a worm hook, it's slightly heavier gauge. So lighter drags, slightly heavier drags, light hooks, light baits, light presentations. So there's some estuary ones that we've got. If we move along a little bit, we go to some other hooks that we'd use in that estuary style situation but with a much, much bigger gape. So that's something we might put a live prawn on, or even a dead prawn. Good for flathead fish that live in the estuary with larger mouths, they're excellent for that. And they're certainly, generally the idea is that the fish will eat that, turn his head, it works a little bit like a circle hook, where that hook will tend to come around the corner of the mouth, and great for catch and release, and certainly for flathead, if you're letting those big flathead go, which you should be doing, great for that style of thing as well. Good for trevally and brim and those other species as well. Move along here a little bit further, and we've got some bait keeper style hooks. And when we talk about bait keeper, and some of the worm hooks I showed you have it as well, we've got two little barbs up at the back here. And on this bigger one, which is more of a snapper style hook, this one will be more for brim, flathead, trevally, smaller salmon. And these, these uh, bait keepers on the back here, they help hold the bait straight. And if you get on the website, have a bit of a scroll through. So my old mate Patrick Brennan on there rigging pilchards uh, on gang hooks and also ringing prawns. And when he's talking about prawns, he puts his little half hitch on the tail, a bit of a secret technique that Patrick's got. But these bait keepers also help hold your bait straight. So when you push that bait up, that little bait keeper, it's got a big offset. So some hooks will be straight, but most bait hooks you see these days generally have that offset. So when I say offset, that hook bend comes around and then it slides out to the side. So that's an offset hook with a bait keeper. Great snapper hook as I've already mentioned. Pop those ones down. I guess uh, one of the famous hooks that we all started out with when I started fishing was fishing for tailor and the old gang hooks. Gang hooks are great off the beach, they're great for tailor, great great for flathead, although lure fishing is, is something that's really taken off for flathead in, in certainly in, uh, in recent times. You can buy hooks such as these ones here, they come in a packet, you can gang your own up, pretty simple stuff. Uh, they're a straight hook so they don't have the offset, slide them through the eye, and through there, a pair of pliers, Simply close that up, and if you're using big long, uh, a big long garfish or a long tom or, or a longer bait or a big pilchard, you can even go to four or five hooks if you really want to, if you're fishing for Spanish mackerel or, or uh, other toothy critters that are going to bite you off. Close that eye up, and there we go. And once again, check the website out, and Patrick uh, shows you how to rig a pilchard, and that's an ideal rig there, ready to go for a pilchard. So you can buy them pre-rigged, or these ones here, allow you to set it up where you might only want two hooks, maybe for a big squid bait for a snapper even. So that's a good way of doing it. So that's gang hooks, what we call gang hooks. And then we get into the circle hook style. So we've got some uh, smaller versions of circles and I'll show you some larger ones there in a minute. Circle hooks, really the origins, origins of that, I should say, came from the long liners. So commercial long liners worked out if they had this big turn or what we call a circle in the hook, that the fish would come up, eat, eat the bait, turn its head and then that circle would lock into the corner of the fish's mouth and then when they come back and pull their long lines in they'd, uh, they'd still be there and we've taken that concept away from the long liners and produced these great hooks and in a, in a society where we really need to focus on catch and release circle hooks are certainly the way to go if you're fishing in deep water with braided lines where they don't have a lot of stretch and you can hook a fish and the fish can easily shake itself off because you don't have that rubber band stretch holding that hook in place, circle hooks are a must really in deep water. Great for live baiting for kingfish, uh, great for snapper, just a great hook around. I really love circle hooks. The one technique you need to use, we'll talk about a little bit uh, more in a second with the bigger ones, is that you don't strike the hook. Fish will, hook, fish will come up with a normal style hook. We get this fella back out again. Fish can come up, 
beat the bait and you drive that tip into the fish's mouth, the point of that hook, that chemically sharpened tip. With a circle hook, fish comes up, eats it. If you pull straight away, the tip's bent down, you're gonna pull that away. And we'll talk about circle hooks a little bit more, as I said, in a second. But the whole idea is when the fish eats it, you just slowly let the fish turn its head, load up, and generally that circle hook will turn in and lock into the corner of the jaw. So just a slightly different technique and something to work on. Okay, what else have we got here? I've got a great array in front of me here. This one here is, a, is one that Gamagatsu do, and it's a saltwater fly hook. So uh, made famous from tying big saltwater flies. This is quite a large one. Uh, quite a lightweight hook, straight, doesn't have that offset, so you can put that in a fly and, and cast it out, and, and that would be certainly uh, legal for, for people fishing for fly fishing records as well. I actually use these hooks in some of my smaller lures on light tackle, so 6, 8, 10, and even 15 kilo uh, when I'm trolling for sailfish and small black marlin. They're super, super sharp, and as we know, billfish have got really, really hard mouths, and you can drive that tip in really, really easy. A little bit of a tip, put a bit of lanolin grease on the tip of the hook, if you troll around all day and rig that hook in there, eventually the salt water will cause a bit of electrolysis on that tip and you'll, it'll lose its point. If you just tiny bit of lanolin grease, wipe it on the tip. When you finish, wash it in some fresh water, wipe some more grease and you'll find they'll stay sharp for a long time. They're a fantastic hook as well. Right, and we're getting into the big boys now. We've got these mega bait hooks here. They're a great big, huge thing. Uh, good for big dew fish if you're live baiting for dew. Uh, cod, big cod, really big kingfish. And they're sort of a, they're not a true circle hook, but they've got this section down here. And uh, it's funny, Patrick and I were having a bit of a chat about this. And uh, he was in Canada not long ago, and he was telling me the boys in Canada find these on their great big lake trout. They find that that hook stays in a lot better with this little pinch section down through here. So just a slightly different shape, big open gate for a big bait. At the end there, we end up with this great big circle hook. Now I love my game fishing, and this is the one that we would use for, for catching big blue marlin, striped marlin, you can pull huge amount of drag as you can see it's very very thick set hook through there so so great for um, switch baiting marlin or pulling live baits around for billfish or any other really really big fish that you want to chase big deep sea cod once again that circle hook uh, philosophy works really well with these where you'd have your 200 pound or 300 pound fluorocarbon leader coming off here and uh, you don't rig it so that it's tight onto the hook you need that hook to be able to pivot and turn and the whole idea is the fish swims up eats the bait and you've got to let it turn don't put any weight on the circle hook whatsoever. That fish turns. As that fish turns, you slowly add the drag, and every time that hook will lock in into the jaw. You can get your fish back. With our billfish, we release 99% of them anyway. Come back, simply cut that off, off, and that hook will rust away. So that's hooks. I'm just about horse talking about it. If you go through the Fishing World website, there's some fantastic tips on all sorts of boating and fishing needs. Uh, that, that certainly you can pick up some points from and help your fishing and boating to be a pleasurable one. It's Michael Guesty. We'll catch you on the water.